Hello everybody, this is Richard Kohut, aka Reese's2150 of course, and I've started recently vlogging a bit, it seems, on my channel, about pop culture things, and I recently wanted to do something else. What? Pretty simple. That right there. Back to the Future 4. And I'll tell you the reason why, because Back to the Future Day is coming up. It's actually 10 19 2015 when I record this, and I have hated the fact that people have, for the past four or five years, doctored the screenshots from Back to the Future 2 to say that, yes, today is the day when Marty McFly traveled to the future. Where's our hoverboards? No. That is two days from right now when I'm recording this. Anywho, Back to the Future Day is coming up, and uh, as such, it's being celebrated all over the place by media nerds and, you know, like myself, movie files, etc., etc., and on Screen Junkies Movie Fights, they recently had the Pitch Your Dream sequel to Back to the Future. Pitch Your Dream Back to the Future 4. And... Ugh, good God, none of them got it right. Uh, <laughs> I don't say that I'm a complete egotist and mine is the only version that'll ever work. But I will tell you my dream version of Back to the Future number 4. Pretty simple. It doesn't involve Marty McFly at all. Marty McFly is not in this movie, and I'll and uh, and I'll, you know I'll, pre I'll I'll start prefacing this with uh, some thoughts about Back to the Future trilogy. The Back to the Future trilogy is not so much about time travel as it is about conundrums and being clever and having enough heart to work your way through. It's basically the most perfect set of adventure movies ever created. It just happens to focus on time travel. But they are the best adventure movies ever made in history. And I don't really have much else to say to qualify that. Either you kind of understand what I'm saying when I say that, or you don't. The fact of the matter is that time travel is just the framing device for what made the Back to the Future movies so great. And it wasn't Marty McFly who did all the work in those movies, or, or in terms of being the character that you love and appreciate. It's Doc Brown. Let's be honest. If there was no Doc Brown in Back to the Futures 1, 2, or 3, we would not have Back to the Futures 2 or 3. It would have died right there. Back to the Future works because of Doc Brown. Now, that said, you cannot say that, you know, Doc Brown is a solo character who you want to follow on your own. So, this is where we're going to get into my pitch for Back to the Future 4. Back to the Future 4 is not going to have Marty McFly in it, like I've said. We're going to pick off, we're going to pick up basically right where we left off in Back to the Future 3. In terms of what characters we are going to use, we are going to use the time-traveling family now of Doc Brown, of Clara, of Jules, and Vern. Those are the only characters that we're going to see in this movie that we have seen before. The rest are going to be new characters. We are going to be not rebooting, not revamping. We are going to be... This is going to be Back to the Future, the next generation, if you will. And how that works is basically you cannot hide what Doc Brown did. At the end of Back to the Future 3... People have seen the flying train. Marty has, you know, not been tight-lipped, of course, because he's a kid. And, you know, there's enough evidence out there that the truth begins to leak out, and we understand that there is this one mystical time-traveling guru out there called Doc Brown and his family basically going around. And if we want to include Back to the Future, the ride, and say that, yes, he has come out publicly to the world and said... I have created time travel. It's a thing that exists. I'm experimenting with it here at the Institute of Future Technology. We can do that. Because, whatever the case may be, the legend of Doc Brown inventing time travel has been picked up a couple decades later, say, maybe the year 2015 or so. It can really be whatever year you want it to be, but either way, some new guy comes in who is obsessed with Doc Brown, who idolizes the guy, but is also really kind of immature, immature, the same way Marty is. And he doesn't really know what he's doing, but he is a bit of a genius in terms of 
the same way that Doc Brown is a bit of a genius, and he somehow figures out what Doc Brown's secret to the flux capacitor is. And because of this, he now invents his own time travel device. He invents his own time machine. The thing is, he's young. He's like Marty McFly. He's innocent. He doesn't know what the hell he's doing. So he does begin to act like Biff does in Back to the Future 2. He gets a time machine, and the first and only thing he ever thinks about is personal gain. I mean, well, that and, of course, finding this mysterious Doc Brown who is out there in the ether somewhere in the time stream, you know, jumping from date to date to date to date. But that's his secondary goal. His first goal is, hey, I've invented a time machine. I might as well benefit from this. So he goes and starts doing bad things. Though he is somewhat mindful of destroying the future, he doesn't understand the complexity of time the same way Doc Brown understands the complexity of time, and he does end up screwing it up. This, of course, means that Doc Brown suddenly notices when he's time-hopping Hey, something happened to the timeline. Somebody else has invented time travel besides me. And thus begins what we see that had not happened before in any of the Back to the Future time travel movies. Doc Brown and his family is the heroes. Now, you could have this run one of two ways. If you want to make this a family affair, you could easily say that Doc Brown uses this to teach Jules and Vern about the complexity of time and why time travel is something that is not to be taken lightly. As he is taking this new guy that he is finding and basically repairing the timeline after him, you know, cleaning up his messes and at the same time trying to intercept him so that he can go, hey, stop this. You've invented time travel. Great. Let me teach you why this is a lot more delicate than you think it is. Or he could say, Jules, Vern, Clara, this is a little bit dangerous. I'm going to stick you guys at a point in the past which is fixed. We do not need to worry about you. I will be back in five seconds. Just count it down, and I will be back. And he goes off in time to begin the chase. Whatever happens from here on out is just pure fun. As we are basically chasing after this new guy, who is a essentially a younger Doc Brown who doesn't have the same respect for the timeline, being chased around by the old Doc Brown who does have respect for the timeline. And you could do all sorts of things. You could even, hell, go back to 1955 if you want to. Have it, you know, granted, we don't need a third Doc floating around, you know, himself. And we don't need to encounter the previous events. We could just have it be a little Easter egg instead of like, hey, 1955 again. What the hell? This really is the focal point of the space-time continuum. Uh, (laughs) Or, you know, or we can do it like we've done in Back to the Future The Ride, where we do blast, instead of just into 2015 uh, Back to the Future Future, we jump way past there into, like, thousands of years into the future, and millions of years into the past, etc., etc., etc. But basically, we're just having a fun time romp chase. It, with, with, with working time machines, fully working time machines. This is the thing about the Back to the Future movies that a lot of people seem to forget about and miss. Back to the Future doesn't feature all that much time jumping. It really doesn't. The premise of the Back to the Future movies is that Doc built this time machine. This is prototype. This is version one. In this DeLorean, which is this POS car that is completely unreliable, It's completely, you know, not foolproofed at all. There are many easy ways to break it and strand yourself in time if you're not careful and know what the hell you're doing, and that's exactly what happens. The first time the first time jump that happens, Marty McFly travels back to the past, he's out of plutonium. He can't get back to the future without plutonium without one point twenty one gigawatts of electricity. 
And luckily, he figures out that a bolt of lightning could do this, or rather, Doc Brown figures out that a bolt of lightning could do this, and they get him back to the future that way. At that point, Doc Brown upgrades the machine to deal with Mr. Fusion. So Mr. Fusion now is the fuel source for the flux capacitor and the time travel circuits. The thing is, it still runs on gasoline. <laughs> and that is the entire premise about how they get stuck in 1885 in the Old West. Is that, oh no, gasoline is not going to be invented. The car runs on gasoline. There's no way for us to reach time travel speeds. Ooh. So, basically now, at the end of Back to the Future 3, we have seen Doc Brown invent the ultimate time travel machine which will run with Mr. Fusion. The flux capacitor will have all the energy it could ever need from any sort of matter you can just toss into it. And it runs on steam to get up to 88 miles an hour. Steam is made from water. You can find water at any point throughout history. doesn't even have to be clean water. You can jump into the ocean and fill it up. It's the perfect, debugged, working time machine, no longer in beta. This is the official one that is going to be used. And we see that only at the end of Back to the Future 3. That's the only time we ever see that one. And that's where he finally begins time hopping that we actually see. Of course, we don't see it. So in Back to the Future 4, that's exactly what we do. We do not get stuck in time trying to fix the time machine and repair it while dealing with the fact of being hidden, trying to not alter the timeline, we are instead fixing the timeline actively while traveling through it multiple times. That is the fun part and the way you distinguish it from other Back to the Future movies. And it can still be fun and have the same spirit. Trust me on this, it can. Beyond that, you can then work your way into the climax of the movie in which the young time traveler, you know, does con either does confront Doc Brown, changes ways, or, you know, has to be destroyed, or something. And as a plot device for that, you can have it be that he would pick up Clara Clayton and Jules and Vern and maybe hold them hostage throughout time, or something or other. Any number of th ways that you can handle the ending of this meeting of, you know, of Doc Brown and the new Time Traveler. And basically, the end of the movie is a passing of the torch. As we see Doc Brown having caught him finally and is beginning to teach him, tutor him under his wing, either at the University of Future, or, or the Institute of Future Technology. Sorry. Almost got my uh, lore mixed up there, but that's okay. The Institute of Future Technology, either he now employs this new time traveler, <laughs> or is just somehow otherwise a mentor to him. And now we see him taking over and doing, you know, the time traveling of being a time travel researcher, kind of, as where Doc Brown basically just invented time travel originally for this purpose of researching and scientific discovery and and then by the end of the movie at, at the end of the trilogy he's not quite doing that anymore he's turned into this victorian era adventurer where he is no longer traveling through time the timeline to gather scientific data and study in order to publish things to the world, he's just going off on this adventure, on this 20,000 leagues under the sea journey to the center of the earth adventure. So now, this new time traveler picks up where Doc Brown originally wanted to go, and he becomes the future historian, the time traveling historian. And you can do what you want from there if you want to continue it, because that is a perfect premise to set up Back to the Future Parts 5 and 6. But that is my dream sequel to Back to the Future. It does not need Marty McFly. Doc Brown is the hero and is the main focus of the movie. 
and we have a working time machine actively jumping between time periods across the points of the movie instead of just being stuck in one time period dealing with the fact of, oh no, we can't alter the timeline, we have to stay hidden, blah, blah, blah. Thank you very much, and happy Back to the Future Day.